Hey, what's going on? It's good to be back. We're on this uh, President's Day. So what's going on? And to get my coffee. I'm used to the job coffee, which is Folger, Folger, Folgers or Maxwell House. Maxwell House is all right. I think I got a taste for Folgers. And so I had to get some of that. I see they got so many damn coffee brands out there, man, that go way back. <laughs> it's, it's just hard to figure out what the hell one is the one to get besides the usual Dunkin' Donuts or something like that. But Folgers right now, I like, I don't like chock full of nuts. I tried that. That was disgusting. I'm not a coffee connoisseur, but I didn't like that one. But um, let me get to the point for tonight. But before I do that, let me say that this channel, we got, we got hit. Not, not with any copyright flags or any uh, strikes or anything like that. But they made some attempts, you know. But they can keep making those attempts. But the truth is, it's probably better for them to just try to leave me alone. You know, that's the best option. You know, then I don't have to deal with them. I don't, I, you know, we don't deal with each other. That's the best option. Um, but they made some attempts to, to, to hit this one. And the attempts didn't work out. You know, I think YouTube is on to them. So it's probably better for them to refrain from doing that. I was going to go in more. But. I figured, you know, I'll wait and see what's going on this week. If nothing uh, outrageous is taking place, you know, I'm not going to comment on it. Then, you know, that's 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 my policy on that. But I just want to say that they did make an attempt. So anyway, let me get to this main topic. This Malcolm X is who killed Malcolm X. I think it's uh, you know, I wasn't going to even talk about this because. Everybody and their mother talked about it like it was mandatory, you know. Uh, but I did get my hands on this, the entire series, you know what I mean? <laughs> and no, I don't have Netflix. <laughs> Everybody out there, they know how to, how to do it. Um, <laughs> um, but um, I have to say, before I even watched it, I asked myself a few questions. What can I find in this new documentary? Even though it's about it's five parts, not necessarily five hours. Make sure it's five parts. Oh, I'm sorry. Six parts. So I guess that would be about five hours. 45, 43 minutes apiece. Um... Uh, as you know, there have been many documentaries, many movies made about Malcolm X, his life, his assassination, and the so-called mystery of it all. And the truth is, just like the JFK assassination and the other assassinations of the 1960s, it's not a mystery. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, we, we, we could think it's a mystery, but the truth is, it's not a mystery. It's only a mystery to the public and those who wish to shut up about it. As you saw in the documentary, people have shut their mouths. And one thing I have to say about that, they shut their mouth on the main character, mainly because well, one of the main characters, one of them still around. He obviously doesn't have long. And I've made many videos concerning uh, are they real or are they agents Malcolm X? Are they real or are they agents Louis Farrakhan? And urban myths and legends concerning the Nation of Islam and how their Uncle Tom House Negro group, pro-white, anti-black. That's the one thing I can say that that documentary did. It proved to a lot of black people what I've been saying for years, that they're, they're anti-black and pro-white. And that stems from their so-called God, 
on down. So that's the good part about that documentary. Of course, the bad part is <laughs> at the end, we're back where we started. <laughs> but they try to lead you on to make it look like there's going to be some resolution to it. Now, I know that they said they're going to look into the case again, you know, some bullshit like that. Everybody's in their goddamn 80s, pushing 90, pushing next to the grave. But that's how coon, uh, coon agents get rewarded. What's going on, Michael? That's how coon agents get rewarded. Uh, they live a long life. But see, when you live a long life, you die of old age. Truth be told, you end up being forgotten. They just say, oh, his time was up. He's old. That's that. See, but when you get shot down like Malcolm X, John Lennon, JFK, Martin Luther King, you really go down as a martyr. You go down as a, a legendary status, the truth be told. So, you know, they think that they punish people when they kill them. But the truth is, just like Ben Kenobi, I'm not trying to be funny, but, you know, just like Ben Kenobi said in Star Wars, he said, you strike me down, I'll become more powerful than you can ever imagine. You know, and obviously in that movie, he was trying to uh, guide Luke Skywalker to destroy Darth Vader. But with the when you kill these guys, these famous guys, what happens is they're being talked about now. Most of us probably weren't even born in the 60s. You know, we're talking about Malcolm X. The people who killed him. They're still living off of the fame and uh, impact of Malcolm X. That's what they're doing. Every time they go on the road and uh, act like they're still the nation of Islam, all their energy comes from Malcolm X. It doesn't come from Elijah Muhammad. So that documentary, he, it, you know, I, I heard some people get angry. Because they say, oh, the nation of Islam is dirty. Well, I mean, you should have known this all the time anyway. I mean, so I don't see what the problem is. Why is it a revelation? Why does it take a docu-series to come out and tell you what you should have known anyway? But I understand that a lot of people, thank you, Kato, I know, understand that a lot of people do not follow things deeply. Everybody knows that I, I'm into the JFK situation and, and I'm into the Malcolm X situation because they're both spectacular events. Uh, the JFK, unlike the Malcolm X, they'll never tell you what happened. That's why I said that book, Harvey and Lee by John Arm Armstrong, it's over a thousand pages, but it's a thousand strong pages. Or you can go to the website and look it up on that and see what you can find. But that's as close as to the truth as you're going to get. I mean, that's the bottom line. So <clears throat> these are both spectacular events. Uh, they One, JFK getting killed, turning point for the nation and the world. Malcolm X getting killed, a turning point for us. And you can say a setback for us. And a reality check for us because that documentary proved what I've been saying all along for, for years on my original channel. And that's why I like time, I like my videos timestamp. That's why I wish they didn't take that video, the, the channel down. Be because I liked it, like it timestamp so you can see when I said what I said, you know. Um, so that event. As you saw in the documentary, uh, it proved that Caribbeans are here to cause a problem for us. Farrakhan's a Caribbean. It proved that there are a lot of Uncle Toms out here. Black people prefer to be in cults that favor their masters. A lot of those people in that documentary who turn Orthodox Islam those are the people I grew up watching on 
the show that they reference like it is. Like a lot of people have. And, um, you know, those people were acting pretty different <laughs> at that particular time. You know, but during this documentary, all of a sudden they're trying to defend the killers. You know? Pretty odd. But I guess fear can uh, grip some people. But they call it fear. I call it Uncle Tomism. That's what I call it. Now, the other good thing I liked about the documentary or docu-series, which, I mean, it was fairly deep. And, you know, I'm surprised there were so many people still around, even though you could see that they looked like they're on the checkout. <laughs> I mean, and that Stern, that DA, my man was pretty happy with what he did. Seemed to have been happy that he helped, uh, you know, get involved in that. He didn't give a damn. That Norman, Norman 3X uh, Butler, he's still around. I'm going to get into them in a minute or later. Because I didn't like the tone of that docu-series because it made those guys look completely innocent. It, that's was never my feeling. Never. And I'm, I'm going to get into that in a minute. And um, the series had a good technical aspect that I liked. I liked the, I saw it in 1080p. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I agree. It, it, largely, it was empty. The, a, a good docu series or documentary was going on. E deck a good uh, documentary that OJ made in America. That was damn near perfect. Except that they left out some critical parts, especially regarding the jury and the jurors' decisions, and they try to kind of have bias and try to make it seem like the crackhead who obviously got paid to say what she said. Uh, you can't tell me any different. They try to make it look like she said, oh, yeah, we uh, acquitted OJ because um, OJ, because of racism. BS. But other than that, I think it captured the very essence of what went on during that OJ Simpson, Simpson situation. And it captured the strong essence of his upbringing, which uh, you know a lot of people didn't know about. I know I didn't, but that was a good one. That's how it should be done. But you know, there's always going to be bias in these uh, documentaries. You know, oh yeah, I'm gonna get into that, Lionel, because that, that was the one of the pivotal scenes that made me say, ah, and, I, and people. Should know. I always talked about Cory Booker. I told people all the time that that guy was a goddamn plant because you could tell because his education level was too high. He went to the finest universities in the world. What's going on, Cipher? So he he wasn't there just to be a mayor of Newark. I told you he was going to be a senator, putting him on the same path as Obama. He went to Oxford University. God damn it. He didn't go there just to be a goddamn uh, uh, mayor of Newark. He didn't even do anything for Newark. As a matter of fact, Cory Booker's response not only left the bad taste in my mouth, but the damn Ross Baraka, who, you know, he was touted as some savior, as they always do. That guy, same thing. I didn't even know they had a black lieutenant governor. She's the same thing. I said, damn. But I'm going to get into that in a minute. But on a technical aspect... I'll tell you what I liked about it. I watched it on, watched it on 1080p. Well, I'm sure it was a uh, film in 4K because I kept marveling at the clarity, the detail, the color. It probably had HDR on it too because I know Netflix uh, streams in HDR, but obviously I wasn't streaming, you know? <laughs> but, um... Yeah, it looked like it had HDR and um, the pictures, whether they were in black and white or color, 
the detail, the clarity. I said, damn, that is so clean, so clear that I, I, to me, that was the next, that was almost as good as being here. I, I mean, that's that's the way it looked to me. I don't know what you guys were watching it on, but damn it, that's, that's the way it looked to me. And I said, damn, it got me to better visualize being alive back in those times, you know? Especially when they showed the pictures of the stairwell and all that kind of stuff. I saw the detail. I was like, damn. That's something else. Uh, Audubon Ballroom. You know, I've seen a whole lot of that. I mean, even back when I was a child and I was hearing about this, watching like it is, because my man kept pushing that over the years. Gail Noble. He kept pushing that Malcolm X over the years. So that's why it was always in my head. You know? But the one thing I noticed, too, though, because uh, I'm like, damn, man, they went back into the 60s like it is. But I'm like, I don't recall Channel 7 ever showing any uh, 60s like it is episodes. I never saw them, but I know they um, would show uh, the 70s episodes, repeats every now and then. Then when it went off the air after my man died, they went and showed a lot of reruns, and they had them available on the uh, website for a while. And they took them down. And I had a lot of them saved. And then my hard drive with the videos crashed. I still can't recover it. Well, I'm going to work on it. You know how it is. Every now and then you're like, damn, forget it. <clears throat> but anyway, from a technical aspect, the 4K picture was brilliant. Uh, the clarity was great. The picture was vivid. But obviously from a content point of view. It was clearly designed to omit. <laughs> it was clearly designed to mislead. It was clearly designed to misdirect. And clearly designed to leave out. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to show you some things that they left out. And uh, because when I was watching it, I'm sure like a lot of you, I was watching it. I Normally... When I uh, want to point out some things in a movie or something like that that's questionable, I'll write the uh, timestamp down and then get back to it and, and try to edit something up. But this time I was just keeping it in my mind. And I said, uh-huh, something's up. I said, my man's holding something back while trying to make it look like he's put, bringing something forth. I said, this guy ain't fooling me because... The Talmadge hire, hire, uh, uh, arrest. He kept running that with the William Bradley uh, coming across the screen. He kept running that video or that film reel back. That's another thing too, man. Whatever system they use, because you can use a lot of software, but because I got a lot of nice software, but I think there's still no substitution for hardware because whatever the hell they were running that shit through, the old films and uh, the pictures, especially the pictures, pictures got higher resolution than uh, video. For people who claim that pictures <laughs> are our worst uh, source than video, you know, <laughs> pictures have a much higher resolution than video. That's why those pictures of the crime scene, and I didn't realize they had so many color ones. It's like, damn, they only released the black and white for the public, huh? Makes me want to go down there and see if they'll let me have copies of those pictures. They got them in there like that. Probably going to try and charge people $20, $25 a picture or something like that. You know how they do it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> they got all those pictures, um, and it was so clear so clean and then the film footage obviously a lot of that uh film footage uh let's see i, I forgot who funded it because it's abdur rahman he claimed that he didn't have a lot of money i'm sure he has a, a few more dollars now but i remember hearing about this guy and this thing being put together but obviously at the end or towards the end i said mm hmm this man been around all this time and people knew it. I remember uh, seeing the, uh, what was it, the post of the Daily News report of him with the uh, walking around with the bins. 
in the gated house and all that kind of stuff. Nobody said a damn thing. But um, this is what they do. Um, I think, from, like, like I said, from the technical point of view, it was spectacular visually. Information-wise, it was half-assed, of course. And I noticed that what everybody else noticed, that just like the Spike Lee movie, <laughs> they put emphasis on others and no emphasis on Louis Farrakhan. You can't tell the story of Malcolm X and his assassination and not mention Louis Farrakhan. But to their credit, they must have been pressured like Spike Lee was pressured. And of course, I'm going to get into the Freemason stuff too, and organized crime aspect of it, which of course they're not going to touch on at all. See, because they always leave it act like it's a mystery. Uh, how come the nation of Islam was protected? How come uh, they did what they did and, and the government didn't do anything? They, don't, they never want to talk about that Freemasonry and that organized crime. See, that, that's why the nation of Islam, they always feel confident when they would say something because they knew the white man had their back. That's why. But um, that's the thing. They always leave out Farrakhan, like in the Spike Lee movie. Now, I recall, and I got to look at the, one of these days, I'm, you know how it is. Sometimes I don't, I don't like watching the uh, director's commentary on the uh, Blu-ray. But sometimes it's a good thing that, to listen to. But I didn't do it yet. But I remember Spike Lee saying that Farrakhan, when he was making the movie, he wanted to uh, interview Farrakhan and put him in the movie. But Farrakhan said, I want the story told the way I'm telling it. But Spike Lee said, I got to tell it the way it was. <laughs> then Farrakhan was like, uh, no, we can't do that. We can't. I'm not going to be in the movie. Don't put me in the movie. And obviously, I'm sure he did the old Nation of Islam intimidation factor. And... You know, that, that, that's what happens. So Spike Lee had to drop that. And of course, Spike Lee's been coming out showing his uh, Illuminati Freemason uh, support with his awards and purple outfits and stuff. And um, after a while, what I'm going to do, show you an interview I did. Uh, not an interview. I, I was just commenting on that search for you. Hulu. <laughs> and... Um, because they were talking about this. So I said, you know what? He's lied. Let me... Come on. You, you, you'll see. You know, he's concerned I was going to go off. I'm not, see, when I go on people's uh, channels, I'm not going to go on and insult. I know some people might see the saw netter and all of them and, and think I'm going to do that. But that's because of the way they do their business. So I kind of have to do it that way with them. But not with anybody else. But um, I did notice that... <laughs> you, you'll see. You'll see. When people like cutting you off at certain times, when you start making certain statements, you know, so that's why I'm going to let that play. I'm not going to um, repeat that right now. So you just see it when, when it comes on. But the William Bradley, when he had the, uh, you know, that clip of the arrest outside the ballroom, as you know, they kept showing the footage over and over again, but they kept concentrating on William Bradley. And they kept cutting critical scenes. And I kept saying to myself, I could not re letting the footage roll. And I watched the whole thing. I, I was going to start talking about it. And then I was like, let me watch the entire thing to see what happens. As you know, sometimes in these documentaries, they like to spring it up on you at the end. But Watched the entire six-part series, <laughs> and they kept on cutting the critical scenes. But I'm going to play the critical scenes today. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you have already seen the critical scenes. See, they didn't want to go all the way in. See, he wouldn't have to ask the question of who killed Malcolm X if he went all the way in. As far as I'm concerned, don't make it if you're not going all the way in. You know, that's the way I feel. Now, I hope he has some unreleased footage 
that he'll spring on people in years to come, <laughs> you know? But I see everybody. Yep, Omar Shabazz. That's exactly what I'm, I'm about to get into. Good thing he was around. Because watching him narrate, because I had seen that whole footage, like I said, on Like It Is back in the day. But nobody ever pointed out where Omar Shabazz pointed out. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, I never noticed that before. And when I show the footage, I'm sure a lot of people have seen it already. But what I'm like, first thing I noticed, even before I saw Omar Shabazz point out things, is I always said to myself, damn, when cops are trying to arrest somebody, especially when you're dealing with shots getting fired, they don't usually let a stranger just try to touch the suspect. You know, <laughs> they don't do that. <laughs> uh yeah, and that's the thing. He even mentioned Omar Shabazz, Lance Shabazz. Uh, what's my man, Kano? Whatever his name is, Con Conco, whatever. <laughs> uh, these guys, a lot of YouTube people, but obviously in the real world, and they made Lance Shabazz look kind of like a hater of Malcolm. You know? <laughs> uh, that's the funny part. Is they give you a skewed view of a lot of people. So, the William Bradley footage, that's, that's the funny part. That says it all. They already knew the whole deal. And when the man is taking things from the suspect while the police are trying to wrestle him and they let the guy do it, that right there already told me they knew this guy and they had to let him do it. And the police were in on it. That's what it told me. You don't really need any further investigation. Because anytime somebody, the cops are handling somebody, whether shots are fired or not, but especially when shots are fired, the cops are like, get the fuck back. You know? They're not going to let you put hands on there because they're going to think, oh, who, do, who, who are you? You might have a gun. You might do something else. You might try to shoot to free the suspect. But the cops weren't concerned with that. Classic setup, classic MO of 1960s intelligence uh, hits of political enemies. Classic MO. That's why I've always said that the Nation of Islam, they were trained by the white man. And they're definitely trained by the white man in the art of lying, as I've always uh, explained and demonstrated. Because they would continue to lie, as we've seen. <laughs> you know, they'll continue to lie, even when proven wrong, even when they're on footage, camera, video, audio, saying the opposite. They'll keep lying. They've been trained by the white man. This is what this is brainwashing techniques and tactics, and this is why they always um, put it in. A video form, you know, because I mean, in religious form, because that's where people believe, and then you instill fear. I've been saying this before when I talk about fear and I talked about brainwashing. You know, this is what happens. Oh, uh, E Deck, they said he took a uh, Omar Shabazz said he took a belt that had information or possible information on uh who sent them and everything just in case they got killed in the process, you know? And even if you didn't want to believe it, the fact that Bradley knew that it was on him and took it off of him had to be something pretty important. So they left that out in the documentary, which is critical. And of course, Bradley, <laughs> you can't speak to him. People could have spoken to him many years ago. But they didn't uh, want to do that. Probably out of fear. You know how it is. Uh, somebody lives in your neighborhood. You're like, yeah, that guy killed that guy. You don't like what he did, but not too many people are going to go confront him. Because <laughs> you like, he has no problem killing. So <laughs> you don't really want to take the chance, especially if you're not sure of what you're going to do. 
But you know what he will do, <laughs> you know? But the interesting part also, you know he got paid off and you know he got protected. But I'm still trying to figure out why did he feel compelled to rob a bank? Now he got off, but his homeboys, <laughs> they did the time. And you know what I always tell you about the, the agents, the Sarnettas and all these people when they do in the Zaza Ali's, when they get turned out in prison or on their way. You saw what they tried to do to Malcolm X. FBI came to his door, tried to get him to turn coon on Elijah Muhammad. And then um, he's like, no. Then the FBI is like, you know, money can help provide information, all that kind of stuff. Because they knew, see, this is the thing. They do their background work. You saw how they were spying on the man. And Lionel, he does, he knows that because he introduced me to that book uh, of the FBI files. It's like, damn, it's like they made their own autobiography <laughs> or biography of uh, Malcolm X with the FBI files alone. You add that together with his uh, autobiography, you got an almost complete history of the man. But that's what they do. You know, they try to turn you out, make you turn coon. And that's what happens with these other agents that you see out here. And that's what happened with Farrakhan. But I think nobody will say this but me. Well, some other people, they don't like Farrakhan. <laughs> But they don't go as far as I go. I, I try to go, you know, to me, if you put your foot in the door, you might as well go all the way in. I think Farrakhan was a coon agent from the get-go. You kept hearing how many uh, agents they had in there, and they were proud of that. And like I told you, so that's why I like, like the documentary in that way, because it validates a lot of the things that I was saying, because... I study this stuff. You know, I don't just talk out of my ass, even though it might seem that way to some people. But I told you there are agents that are known, like the Gene Roberts. He had to rise to the top and be trusted. And his only excuse was, I got a pregnant wife. That's what they all say. I'm just doing my job, man. <laughs> I'm just doing my job. But he signed up for the job. But see, you couldn't bring black people down. Unless you had a coon to help do it, you know? Like I always say, you can't do it without help. I read ancient history, the Roman Empire. They had coon puppet leaders in other countries that they put in charge, just like they do today. Nothing's new. And they had to support Rome. And uh, obviously, if they got out of line, you know what happens. <laughs> but <laughs> but that's why they put them in there, you know, because they're their puppet leaders. So this is what we, we're dealing with. Um, this is why I tell black people, if you could resist, we could become powerful. But it's hard to do that because you got different personality types. You got people who have individual interests, whether it's greed, drugs, homosexual uh, desires, or all the other types of uh, crazy-ass desires out here that people want. And that, that that's what the CIA, FBI, that's what they use to manipulate. So that's why they went to Malcolm X offering him money. Because they figured, well, he's already hating on Elijah Muhammad as it is. And we know his financial situation isn't good. So maybe he'll get paid just like the rest of these coons. Let's see, Malcolm X was real. He was real. So he didn't take it. But like I was saying before, this documentary, like the Spike Lee movie, purposely left out Farrakhan. Now, to their credit, I, I'm sure they must have done it for a reason. And I was looking at some of the uh, <laughs> credits of the documentary, let me, because I got some of it up now, but obviously I'm not going to play it because you know it's going to happen, but I got some of it up, 
And I was looking at. I could have sworn I saw a Mario Van Peebles name in it, but I know I saw a lot of the usual uh, suspects. Executive producer Henry Lewis Gates. <laughs> I know this ain't George Lane's builder. Prince Paul. George Lansbury. Okay, I thought that was uh then there's a Raphael Rodriguez. Pretty interesting names for a Malcolm X documentary. Yeah, music composed by Prince Paul and Donald Newkirk. Oh, he's going by Don Newkirk now, huh? <laughs> Damn, so my man's still getting some run. Yeah, Spike Lee was in it too. I guess, well, I guess as a consultant, because he did a lot, had to do a lot of research when he did his movie. Prince Paul, White Stone archival producer, Shayla Harris, directed by Dresden or whatever it is. So they did a good job with the special effects, and. Um, you know, like I said, from a technical aspect, it was great. But from an informational aspect, it was lacking. It was like being promised, you know, uh, a nice uh, pizza <laughs> or something like that. Nice, full gourmet meal. Then when you get there, you're like, man, this shit is already pre-made, pre-cooked. You know? So, it, you know, it wasn't really as good as it could have been. They say that Farrakhan has imposed a no comment to his, not ministers, to his student ministers. <laughs> and uh, again, I always said before, because people, they, they keep telling the lie. They say that Farrakhan, they hate him. You know, they keep restricting media from him. I'm like, man, every time the man wants to call a press conference, the media comes. They pay attention to him. And I tell you why. It's because he's a coon agent and they need him to, to look like he is the top man. And they keep playing the game, making it look like they don't like the guy. I keep That's why I keep telling people, the people who uh, took my other channel down, I used to tell them. They took JFK out. That's what it looks like when they really don't like you. So that's why throughout the Obama years, I already do all that was BS. I said, as long as the man's still living, he's playing his role. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, Malcolm X. And, and, and this documentary, Lionel, they did that? Or was you talking about the uh, a movie that was done a while ago? Mario Van Peebles in this film did out Farrakhan's name in one scene after Malcolm X's assassination. And Farrakhan was very angry about it. He mentioned it in his speech back in 96. About to play some stuff by Farrakhan where he admits to killing or admits to telling people to kill. And then you'll know that it's not just the figure of speech. And you know that he's not just like that. Um, oh, the movie. Oh, okay. This is what they do, man. Farrakhan, as you know, is a coon agent. I've been saying that for the longest time. That's why it's just like you saw with William Bradley in Newark. Nobody wanted to say anything about him. And now we got to figure out why he was treated like a hero. That's the key thing. If the man killed a person that they said is a hero and that they loved and they didn't mind the killing and then they celebrate one of the guys who did it. And I guess he got the first shot because he, I guess he said he, he wanted the credit, main credit, I guess. And uh, why did they celebrate him like that? He's a black people. <laughs> you know, he's a black people. That's why I say, that's why I come the way I come, because I know some people want to trick you to Pan-African, they trick you too, and try to get you to thinking about some bullshit. 
get you to think about we're all in this together. But I'm, I point out what I point out to let you know that there are cool agents out here. And they hate black people. That's why you got to find out what their backgrounds are, their nationalities. Then you'll understand why they do what they do. And part of it is greed, part of it is fear, all that kind of stuff plays a, a part. Opportunity. Now, I've been to Newark quite a few times recently. And uh, very recently. Newark is not a pretty city. And truth be told, you know, it looks run down, looks horrible. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> Uh, damn, I forgot the previous mayor that was there before, Cory Booker with the glasses. Sharp, I think his name is Sharp James, I think. A Newark. Uh, Cory Booker, I saw that coming. I had videos on it. That's why I like the timestamp. I had videos on that, saw that thing coming because of his education. That's why you look at these people's education, you'll find out what they're really all about. Bill Clinton went to Oxford University. You don't go there unless you're going to be, you're being groomed to be put on an international scale, international situation. That's why I say look out for Cory Booker to be the first openly homosexual president. Allegedly. <laughs> I know he dropped out of the race. There was never any race. You got to understand. There is no race. They got who they got because that's why they took care of JFK. They say, fuck this election bullshit. This guy didn't do what the hell we wanted him to do. So we'll just put our own people in there. We'll get rid of this guy. We'll put our own people in there. See, once you gun a man down and show that that's what you're going to do, then the next man is scared. Just like with Malcolm X. Gun him down. People in Newark scared straight. Oh, yeah, that's him. I'm not looking him in the eye when I walk by him. <laughs> you know? That's how people do. I'm sure we all have known people or who, who, we've known of people who killed somebody. And they're in plain sight and people know. And... You ask yourself, damn, how come they're not in, uh, in prison? That's why people will kill people. Because if they know the family or friends, they're not coming back to take uh, vengeance like in the Kung Fu movies. You know, it seemed like in the Kung Fu movies, that's, that's what you had to do. I'm going to avenge my master, you know. But only thugs go out and, I guess, avenge a death. But if more family members did... Not that I'm advocating anything, because I know some people are going to be slip, be like, oh, boy. I'm just saying, that'll calm people down. But when some people kill somebody, and they know, okay, well, the police, they're not coming at me right now. And I know everybody else, if they ain't coming after me, they're com not coming after me because they're too scared. So that encourages them to keep on doing it. Matter of fact, if you watch that Fatal Attraction episode, a few weeks ago when they had that hitman, I think it was out of Detroit. They killed the uh was hired by the husband and then to kill the wife and he had a change of heart, even though he killed the girl. But he still had a change of heart. He's like, Oh, I normally just I'm a hitman, I just kill drug dealers. There ain't nobody anyway. But I was feeling bad about this this lady I killed. Even though he still killed her and took the money. But he, he was feeling bad, you know. He said he killed 10 people. So that goes to show that there are people out here killing multiple people. And people fear them because they're like, damn, these people got, they don't give a damn, they'll, they'll kill. Other people, they'll say, oh, man, I, you know, I'm worried about going to jail. I, you know, I ain't got time for that. I might get killed. You know, you come up with every excuse you can come up with, you know, <laughs> just so you can say, I'm not trying to do that. But the truth is, human beings are human beings. Um, some people are either crazier or just don't give a damn. So they take out 
other people. And that's what the drug dealers, when I was growing up, they used to say things like, I remember one guy was training a drug dealer how to be a drug dealer on the street. <laughs> He's like, man, you just can't let people run up on this block and do what the hell they want to do, man. You got to show these people some respect. You got to make them respect you. That's what he said. And the guy was like, how you got to do that? He's like, man, you got to take your thing and you got to do what you got to do. You got to make them respect. I said, damn. And that was my sister's would-be boyfriend, I guess, who came off to my mother as so nice and so sweet. <laughs> she didn't know what he was doing out there. Don't ask me how I overheard that. Just to say the technology of the day messed things up. <laughs> but it was shocking. You just never know what's on people's minds, but respect. He was talking about shoot people, shoot them, shoot at them, shoot them. It's all about getting people scared. That's what it's all about. It's the name of the game. Um, so let me talk about a few people that was in the documentary. I'm going to get deeper into this Farrakhan thing in a minute. Let's start off with John Ali. Everybody always said he was the agent. And I'm thinking, man, you, you watch documentaries, you watch interviews. It's like everybody's pointing their fingers at John Ali. I was thinking, was this man dead? Because even before this documentary a few years ago, I was looking up this John Ali. I was like, man, I don't have any confirmation that the man is dead. And then they bring him up. Which was a good thing, you know. Uh... And he was looking pretty very old. He was looking like he might be out of here any moment, <laughs> you know? And I, I was like, damn, I kept, I don't know me, I kept looking at it, I was looking at the age. Maybe the 4K video made him look a lot older. I, I don't know, maybe that could be part of it. But um, I kept saying to myself, man, these people are still around, but they're about to be on the checkout pretty soon. That John Ali, he almost confessed to being an agent, but I don't think the interviewer knew how to ask the right way. <laughs> you know how to get that information out of him. You know I know how to get the goddamn information out of him, especially when I see an old man who's lost his mind already. You no, know, that's when I'm gonna definitely take advantage of the situation and pull that information out of him. I'm gonna plead with the man if I have to, just anything to get the information out of him. I'm gonna be like, man, listen, man, you need a cane, you can hardly talk, you're weak. I mean, you could drop dead right now. You might as well confess and let it be known. I mean, you don't have, you don't have anything to lose, Mr. Ali. But he didn't do that. He didn't even pressure the guy. <laughs> And Ali kind of, he said, what? I went to uh, Hoover and asked to be an agent, but they turned me down. That's when he was asked, were you an agent? <laughs> he, he, he didn't confess to being an agent. He just redirected the questions, you know, like liars usually do. Even at his elderly state, he looked pretty bad, too. Goes to show, I guess, if we all reached in the 80s or whatever, we, we're going to look pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's the thing. You they killed Malcolm, but Malcolm is forever. What was he? Thirty nine. He's forever thirty nine. So that's how he's looking. John Lennon, same thing. So, but these guys, they live a long time. But damn, you, you're weak, old, and broken down. Was it really worth it? Because you're gonna. That's the thing. You all gonna die at some point in time. <laughs> so, was it really worth it? But John Ali he was still fairly clever in his answers. And tells me he was an agent, but what kind of agent was he? Because nobody whipped his ass. Nobody took care of him from that time up until now. So we know a lot of people in the Nation of Islam ended up getting killed. Malcolm's people did get revenge and took out a lot of their people. There was a war going on, you know? I didn't look into each case individual. I'm about to play uh, a scene in a minute that'll give you an idea 
of the seriousness of all this and how vicious the nation of Islam, how they were on black people and how they're part of the power structure controlled by the white man, which is why they're able to get away with the things that they got away with. And this is why they didn't attack black people. I mean, white people. <laughs> all they did was attack black people. The white man tells them, kill Malcolm X. They're like, yeah, boss, no problem. They never stopped to think, well, how come they don't want us to kill some white person? Because you're a nigga, that's why. <laughs> I mean, come on. So, yeah, John Ali, you know, I don't know where the hell they grabbed him out of. I don't know why I never saw anybody else dealing with him. Uh, Yusuf, Yusuf uh, Shaw, they didn't mention him. Maybe they didn't want to get too deep. Akbar Muhammad was on there, and he was looking pretty old, too. I'm like, damn. I mean, I did the years really going by like that, and then I start thinking about myself. I'm like, damn, that was uh, way back in the olden times. Different style of clothes, different cars, and everything's looking wild. But those people are almost on the checkout. I'm surprised my Akbar Muhammad was on there. But no Farrakhan. You see, Farrakhan's looking old. Looking at John Ali, I don't know who's older. And um, some of the other guys, I have to say, Farrakhan ain't looking too bad then. You know? <laughs> Even in his current condition. But as you can see, they're all at that age where... Remember, my, before my father died, I didn't know how old he was, truth be told. But I hadn't seen him in a, in a while. And then I, I saw him, and I was like, damn, this guy looking pretty old. I mean, how the hell does he go from looking one way? I admit it was probably a few years, but before I saw him again. And I said, damn, you're looking old. I was like, how old is this man? Never bothered to ask him, but I find out he was in his 90s. <laughs> but he was still standing up straight. I was like, this is wild, man. Very wild. So this is what I'm going to do. Let me... uh. Make sure I got this thing. Hold on. Make sure I got this. Yeah, first let me do this first. Let me um do the screen share. Let me get rid of this. I'm gonna show you when I was on the search for you. Hoo It's not that long because uh for some reason my man don't want to let me stay into the end. I guess he thinks I'm gonna disrupt the longer I stay on. <laughs> but um, I know the people who shut my uh, main channel down, they're going to get pissed off of what I say. you damn right. I was pissed, so I let it be known. But I didn't say their names because I didn't want them to get any fame. So, so let me uh, screen share. It is in August. August 13th through the 19th, August 13th. He sponsored me for jujitsu, $600 a month, every month like clockwork. That guy drives, he got Benzes, all kinds of cars. It's beneficial for him. He's a millionaire. He could buy a new suit, go over to the mosque and look clean and look awesome, right? But how was him being rich helping us? It helped me. But that doesn't mean I was like, well, I'm going to join the NOI, because this guy helps me. And a lot of it is that kind of thing, where these guys are focused on themselves, but they're telling you, you should join it too, because it's all about building up numbers, you know, so it looks a certain way. But what is the actual impact of it? Hold on, Alquan, don't, don't come on here trolling, bro. Oh, no, no, you know, I keep it all respectful, all peaceful like the last time. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, man, uh, it's funny how they keep coming out with these particular... I guess Netflix documentary type things where I, I think they serve as revisionist history. I haven't seen it yet, but that's what I'm guessing. I'm trying. I tried to download it before I came on. It'll be up there pretty soon <laughs> on the other circuits. Well, 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 in what way would it be revisionist? I mean, you haven't saw it yet, but where, where, where are you getting that from? Right, because they change the little things. They try to rearrange the focus on a lot of the uh, who did what. I mean, why do you have to ask who shot Malcolm X? 
you already know who shot Malcolm X. That was Louis Farrakhan. Okay, all right, Alquan. No, that's not trolling, man. That's no, that's that's, that's no, being straight I, I, up. I, I, no, he, he admitted no. it. Oh, no. yeah, he, he didn't shoot. He didn't shoot Malcolm X, but he did admit that he had he was speaking incendiary, inflammatory things concerning Malcolm X that may have played a part in making somebody want to do harm to him. Farrakhan did admit that. I do know that because I researched this in depth. And Farrakhan just happened to have been in Newark when it was going down. So Farrakhan that way, was on the radio at this time. Yeah, so, so he that, had a large audience. So that way he can uh, get the news, the New York news, while he was in New Jersey. Yeah. Farrakhan was very powerful. People don't understand how Farrakhan, how did the leadership go from Elijah Muhammad to Farrakhan? Because Farrakhan was the probably the third most influential person in the NOI behind Malcolm X. That's why when Malcolm died and Elijah Muhammad died, it fell to Farrakhan. Because well, he, I think I think it's really important. I got to say this and kind of correct you on that. It, it didn't fall to Farrakhan. It actually fell to uh, Wallace Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad's son, which is still strange how I felt to him because he denounced his father's teachings to his father's face and to his whole congregation. But yeah, then, but I, I, want to well, the, I want to set the record straight on something. Louis Farrakhan did not... Not uh, physically. Not physically. No, but he did admit, Dinus, he did admit that what he said over the radio waves um, may have had an, an influence on Malcolm X being killed. He did admit that, bro. He really did. You can find that. Okay, but uh, yeah, I just want to, because from what Alquan was saying, you know, I just want to make sure that everyone understands that Louis Farrakhan did not physically harm Malcolm X. Right, right, not physically, no. but he okay. did help to arrange it. That, there's no doubt about that. Look at uh, Omar Shabazz's uh, videos. He makes some pretty good videos on the matter. And I also want to say that Farrakhan's Nation of Islam is not Elijah Muhammad's Nation of Islam because that was Wallace Muhammad's uh, Nation of Islam, which he turned to Orthodox Islam. Farrakhan's Nation of Islam is his own uh, rebranded startup Nation of Islam. And there are also other Nation of Islams, Son of Man, uh, Royale, uh, Eric Muhammad Temple uh, number 15, and, and uh, uh, what's my man? Uh, 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 I forgot my other man. Nation of Islam, Inc. But notice how the media, the white media, they never talk about them. They only talk about Farrakhan, which is because the fact that he's an agent. Fair, no, fair, no, it's not because he's an agent. It's because Farrakhan is the most dynamic figure among all of those. Farrakhan is the person who has the media's attention. He's the person who the vast majority of people in the nation of Islam view as the leader. That's, that don't got nothing to do with white well, that, people. But that's not true, though. Because the, the, those other nation of Islam, they see him as a traitor. No, 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 it, it, it is true. Fair it's not true, bro. Why do you think nobody ever heard of the stuff you're talking about? No, no, but the reason why is because the white media focuses on Farrakhan because they want you to focus on him. They don't want you to talk about the other guys because the other guys are going to talk against Farrakhan. That's why. Yeah, but I know. So I live in I live in Atlanta in the West End, and there are there's the other. Other nation of Islam <laughs> newspaper. You can say him. Yeah, yeah, Eric, yeah, Eric yeah, Muhammad, yeah, uh, temple number 15. You can say him. Uh, literally right across the street from Farrakhan's nation of Islam. And so they, they basically were saying that Farrakhan's nation of Islam isn't the real nation of Islam, that their nation of Islam is mm -hmm. the real nation Right, of because Islam. they go by the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, while Farrakhan does not. Yeah, that's what they were saying. But at the end of the day, Farrakhan is still the most dynamic leader of you know the nation of islam or islam or well he's the most uh well known and the only one made official by white people but he's not the only one and other other nation of islams they do not recognize lewis farrakhan they openly speak against him yeah true so true. i mean the, you gotta, the, okay, go the biggest the biggest thing is this and like if you look at the comments a lot of people from the nation of islam are commenting people don't understand something if they can't see something if they're too close to it. When I was a Jehovah's Witness, if you would have told me something about the Jehovah's Witness organization, I would have fought you tooth and nail because I was so close to it. Yes, it did seem like the answer to everything. But not until I was able to step away and truly objectively look at it, did I see the damage it was doing to me and to other people who were in it. The point is, you don't, like, we should never be faulting 
the people who are who are taking the lead among us for needing to make money to continue the work that they're doing. That's why I tell people, even with a guy like Dr. Umar Johnson, stop criticizing Umar because once Umar is gone, who's going to replace him? Don't criticize Dinus because when Dinus is gone, who's going to replace him? And Dinus, you know, just like I do, every single day we are offered the opportunity to leave this fight behind and go work with the white man and make a bunch of money. Because my channel, white people watch my channel and other things that I put, other media I produce on my podcast and stuff like that. And they'd be like, bro, why don't you come work for me? You got a gift. Get on my show, woo woo woo, and, and I could pay you five thousand dollars a month, ex, you know, etc. And I'm like, nah, because that's not what I believe in. So for people to try to shame you or anybody else for making money to to support yourself, all they're doing is setting up us. We basically set it up so that our leaders betray us for monetary gain because we won't give them nothing. We tell them they gotta be poor. So when so. You can only eat cup of noodles so many nights before you start thinking like, dang, bro, I really need some steak. You know what I'm saying? That's why black leaders always sell out because black people think if you got money, I can't trust you. But when the rich black guy come in who don't give two craps about him, then they love him. They admire him. He's the greatest thing since sliced bread. You know, as long as he's saying things that they want to hear like pastors, preachers, etc. Because they want some of that money. They think they could be like them. They 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 love the people who they want to be like. They want to be rich. They want to have the fancy cars and stuff like that. You you don't got nothing because you're living a humble existence. So they don't. They might think you're cool, and they might you know respect. Them. They might respect you, but they don't really respect your message that you're bringing enough for it to invoke any action and what they're uh, any change in what they're doing or to have you, any real power in their lives. You mind that's if I just you mind if I just address something that somebody in the chat uh said earlier? They said something to the effect that Khaled Muhammad left the hold nation on, of Islam. On, stop the show. Stop. Okay. Anybody in the nation of Islam call in. I keep putting the email in the chat room. Call in, click the link. I mean send me an email. I will send you the link and come on. They're not going to come on. They're not going to come on. I like them to come on because uh, they said that Khalid Muhammad left the nation of Islam. Now, it's on the record. No, 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 no. Khalid, Khalid was kicked out. Right, kicked it's, out. Right. It's, it's on the record. He says it out of his own mouth. Just like if the record is straight with Farrakhan, I mean with Malcolm X, everything that went on is on the record of what happened. He got kicked out. Farrakhan kicked him out. Why? Because he talked about the white man and the white man told Farrakhan, kick this black man out. And he did it. And Farrakhan, Khalid, had, he had, yeah, he had no good excuse for it. Khalid except Muhammad, to, except to say, Khalid I didn't like, I didn't like his tone. Khalid Muhammad got kicked out for one reason. And if you've ever been in any of these black groups anywhere in the United States, when you are about action, right? And these people are just trying to stay complacent because they have a good thing going where they're making money and they don't got to really do anything. When you rock the boat, they got to get rid of you. I was in a group here. I won't mention the name. But when I started talking about we need to be taking trips to Africa, when I stopped, I was heading a group. When I said we're no longer going to pay people to come and speak, what we're going to do is we will speak amongst ourselves. We will study books, read books, and learn so we can be peers to these people who we worship. We can be their peers as opposed to just their followers. And we're going to save the money we're spending, and we're going to fly to Africa once or twice a year. So people could get a, get the experience and, and, you know, they could understand what they're fighting for. I was basically kicked out of that. I was dismissed as the leader of that group because the lady who ran the group was just making money off of that because she was taking the money that was getting put in the pot and she was splitting it. She would give the person who speak a little bit of change and she would keep the lion's share. Once I said that our money was going towards something that benefited the group, the members, Gone. I was dismissed. Whenever you mess up the hustle, you will be dismissed. Period. That's right. That's right. But but uh, Aquan, we appreciate you coming on, brother. Let me get uh. Eric. All right, well, okay. oh, oh. oh, I just want to say, well, thank you for having me. My channel is hard cold. Thank you. Okay, for sure. Aquan, what happened to your other channel? 
uh, some coons. That, let me tell you this: people who hate Pan Africanism, uh, people who hate pro black people, people who hate uh, the people who like uh, ancient Kemet, and people who just uh, hate people who want to bring positivity to black people, they false flag my channel down. Not you guys, but people who hate red, black, and green. How do you get your channel false flag? I, I just don't understand how that how that works. Apparently, it's it pretty easy. easy. If it gets reported enough, they'll take it down no matter what. Even if it's talking about bunnies. Yeah, they lie and claim that they own stuff, and then YouTube just accepts it, and they pull it down. Oh, wow. It's okay, crazy. Well, 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 uh, well I'll stay up, brother. All right. All, right. All right, so that was that. Finally got that out the way. So, yeah, I was on there, and... um. You know, uh, and that was before I saw the uh, uh, thing, and I'm gonna edit some of that stuff out too later on. <laughs> um, that was before I saw the show, and the reason why I was able to um, know what I was talking about, even without seeing the documentary, is because people like me, we you know, we do the research already, so we already know what can't be new. You know, the only thing that can't be new is some unreleased stuff, unreleased footage. And um, I think Omar Shabazz, he even alluded to the fact that there could have been a camera in there. Now, I always found it weird, unlike some people pointed out too, that they have footage about what was going on before and they had the footage right after. And they even had audio of it, but no footage of when it was going down. And like I said, that's another uh, MO. You know, that's another uh, motive, another uh, scheme that they use. Oh, I'm looking at the uh, something else. Patty Leahy, they didn't, for some odd reason, you're commenting. Come on, maybe it's the. I don't know what it is, man. I don't know, man. YouTube is just crazy. Locking things up. Anyway, the MO, same thing with the JFK assassination. I know, excluding Zapruder, nobody else had real footage of what went down. Oh, okay, it's a delay. <laughs> nobody else had the real footage of what went down during the JFK assassination. But somebody is filming at all times secretly because. I hate to say it, but like serial killers, they kind of want a trophy to say, this is what we did. This is how we pulled this off. And we fooled the public. And I'm sure they've been watching it over and over and over again to themselves. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, Texas Cowboy. Dick Gregory, another coon agent. I'm surprised he wasn't really mentioned in this uh, documentary because Dick Gregory is the one coming in again, defending defending Agent Farrakhan, saying that they uh, shot from above. You know, trying to put in a mysterious, the government did it, while the nation. I mean, that was the dumbest lies I ever heard. He said the Nation of Islam killers. Thought they were killing Malcolm X. <laughs> I think he said they had blanks in their uh, weapons too. He's like, "Oh, I thought they thought they were killing them, but people from above, the, the government. Don't you hear what I'm saying? The government did it. <laughs> I mean, he was a goddamn coon agent. That's why I don't give a damn about no coon. You know, yeah, there is no way. I mean." We already see where the shots came from, and the witnesses already say who did the shooting. And like I said, years ago, because I was just looking up the uh, finding the site that uh, had all the files that I seen before. I seen the uh, autopsy of Malcolm X years and years ago, so I already knew it was the shotgun blast to the heart that killed him. And I was just trying to remember what the site was today, and I went and I found out. I'm sure you're gonna remember this site that used to be all over the place. It's called the Smoking Gun. Remember that site? They're good for documents. I thought they were uh, not in business anymore, but they're still around. They're still coming up with current stuff. 
but for some odd reason, they don't get the uh, the publicity they used to get. But that's still a place to go to get your documents. I think that's where I used to go to get the court documents on uh, Ben Roethlisberger and his rape uh, <laughs> uh, complaints or allegations. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, the smoking gun. I don't know how they fell out of favor, but that's still the place to go. Get your documents. And I think that's where I read the uh, Kobe rape case, too. And that's how I read that thing in detail. That's how I knew he was talking about Shaquille O'Neal bringing him up for no reason. But, again, this this um, documentary, I'm going to open the uh, lines after I do a few more things. And I hope somebody from the Nation of Islam or is affiliated with them comes on, but... For some odd reason, those guys are not prepared to go toe-to-toe with anybody who knows a little something. What's going on, Uno? So, again, <clears throat> this was the case of protecting Farrakhan, once again. And I think this is serving as kind of a warning to Farrakhan. Um, you know, that's a good question. <laughs> Would there have been a Black Panther Party without Malcolm X assassination? So they said they were influenced by that. Probably not. They probably would have joined him if he had lived. That's what I think. What happened to Ben X? Ben X ain't ready, man. He 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 and the RZA, they, those are two uh, younger guys that they're grooming up to brainwash the youth. <laughs> That's all they're doing there. That's all they're for. They, they, they train them well. Ben X has a great knowledge of a whole lot of things. I think Rizza is probably related to Farrakhan because he looks like him. Um, ben X, he's trained very well. He's trained in the lying arts very well. But he just doesn't have what it takes to go toe-to-toe with the big boys. You know, me, I'm the type of guy, I'm like, bring on Farrakhan himself. Bring on Akbar Muhammad. <laughs> you know, that's, that, that's who I want. I don't want no Ben X. <laughs> um, but again, Dick Gregory up here lying, trying to—it's uh, the same mo. These, this is why you could tell these are cool agents because they do the same tactics as taught to them by their white masters. Same tactics of trying to cause confusion after every event that they stage, which is to make it look like introduce some more shooters, alternative shooting theory. Uh, people shot from here, people shot from there. Uh, these guys ran out, and then everybody says, Oh man, what, what happened now? The JFK situation is different because there were <laughs> different people who were doing it, that's where it all started. So, when that happens, you got to say, Okay, well, if somebody says there were other shooters or bullets uh, coming in different directions, then they try to cause confusion by saying, Well, maybe somebody says there was bullets coming in that direction too. And then you, you have so many uh, different theories that after a while, somebody's like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm confused with all this bullshit. I'm going to just go with what the police say. Good enough. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I got to see if that Dick Gregory video is on here. If not, I'm going to put it back up. Um, oh, yeah, those people that took the other channel down, they were hating on that, too. How dare you disrespect Dick Gregory? See, these people defend the agents. I'm trying to call them out. Because once you call them out, then your people know who not to follow. You know? And uh, that's what you saw in this documentary. You saw people in Newark, mainly among the Muslim and the political establishment, defend Mr. Bradley. And they even feared discussing the situation. So I like to psychoanalyze the people and analyze the events. When they asked Cory Booker, first of all, you could see in his face, he kind of was getting a little apprehensive and trying to think of lies like a politician does, you know. Do you know William Bradley? Or the the Muslim name. <laughs> then he was uh in a Netflix. Then he was getting concerned. He was like, "Oh no, I I don't know this person." 
are you aware, aware that the person was in your video? Uh, yeah, promo, promo video. Promo video? Then they show him the picture. He's like, oh, yes. I, oh, yeah, I know this guy. Uh, do you know that this guy was uh, possibly involved in killing a Malcolm X? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. And he starts getting nervous. You can see the look in his eye. I see the eyes get big. Then he's it's like, damn. I'm like, what the this secret society stuff, man? <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, damn. It's like they got people shook. Like crazy. So you, people keep trying to downplay this Illuminati stuff, act like it ain't real, but you can see. And then we see the Vaz uh, Baraka, you know, who they have as, you know, with that name, pseudo African name. <laughs> and he's supposed to be, you know, give the impression that he's a cultural black man and he's down for the black people is going to help Newark. But none of these guys, Sharp James, none of these guys did anything for Newark. Newark still looks like shit. I'm sorry. Still looks like shit. They didn't do nothing. You saw when Whitney Houston died, Cory Booker was the mayor. I, I was telling people why they interviewing this guy. What does he have to do with Whitney Houston dying? They're putting him on. They were putting him out there to groom him so he could become national. That's why they put him in, in as a senator. It's the same thing they did with uh, Barack Obama. Um, they're putting these guys on. They run against no competition or whack competition. But that Raz uh, Baraka, that guy is even more scared than Corey Booker. That's why you can tell these people are appointed to these positions. Newark uh, is apparently training ground for a lot of these coons and uh, people that they groom. They'll just put them in as mayor. That's why you can't win. Because the shit is rigged, man. <laughs> it's rigged. People want to uh, have a jump off, easy jump off to become president. What do they send them to? They send them here to New York. Become a senator. Hillary Clinton. Bobby Kennedy. But you saw what they did to Bobby Kennedy. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's been, yeah, it's been scripted. That's why I like my timestamps on my videos because I said it before that happened. And... I like the timestamp so that people can go back and say, oh, okay, this guy wasn't bullshitting. It's not, I'm not a prophet. I'm not clairvoyant. I'm just trying to, you can see the pattern. Just like you just said, Lionel, you can see the uh, pattern. It's pretty clear. And he's going for the White House. He was trying to run this time, but see, that's just to get his name out because he's been on the, uh, these national TV shows. You got to ask yourself, okay, why is he on this Tonight Show? <laughs> why is he on that show? Who gives a fuck about this guy? <laughs> I mean, but they want you to give a fuck. That's what it is. But again, with that, uh, Ross Baraka, you saw how he responded. Yeah, that's an open secret. But yeah, we don't talk about that. You know what that's all about. The Lieutenant Governor, the black lady. She, uh, she was kind of ghetto fied. But she went there to the funeral. You gotta ask yourself a question. And that guy, Ab Abder, uh, what was his name? Abder Rahman, Rahman, my man, uh, maybe it's the cut, <laughs> but my man just didn't go further enough along in the questioning, man. You need people like me to ask these hardcore questions. Now, with that lieutenant governor lady, I, I would have been feeling like, okay, if I go too deep, too quickly, she might say, okay, sir, uh, I got a meeting I have to go to. I'm going to have to ask you to uh, leave. Uh, one more question, ma'am. Uh, I'm going to have to call security if you don't get the hell out of here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's how it is. You know, got to ask these questions, man. These people, these older people he was dealing with, these people will be dead next year. You know, or by the end of this year. <laughs> I mean, come on, you got to ask these questions and get that shit on the record. But the guy's funeral, his send-off was like a hero's send-off. So I'm guessing it's Freemason related because these people are so shook. Don't want to talk. That means they know what the deal is. And this is an example of why black people don't get anywhere because we have divided loyalties. Freemasonry 
That's the white man's. Uh, you're dedicated to the white man's world. No matter how you want to look at it, no matter how you want to convince yourself of it, because that's what's stopping these people from saying, this is the guy. Goddamn two mayors of Newark couldn't say, go get that guy. Mayor robs a bank. I don't know. They must not have paid him enough money because <laughs> you got to rob a bank. They said $12,000 in 1968 dollars. I don't know how much that is. Might be around 75000 maybe, I'm guessing. Um, he didn't do any time. That's why he walked around so arrogantly. That's why he knew what he could do. That's why he pulled that belt off of uh, Hagen. Because he knew he had a juice card. And the juice card wasn't from black people. The juice card was from the white man. You know, that's what I've been trying to tell people the truth about the ancient Islam for years. It's be, and it's not because that's what I wanted. It's because that's where the evidence goes, man. This is what they've been talking about. They're pro-white and anti-black. I've been saying this for years and years and years. They talk tough. They, it's all to trick the public and to trick the low-level members into making it look like, okay, these guys are for real. But they're not for real. Malcolm X was killed by these guys. And the white man, and this is what I said, I stand by this. The white man ordered them to kill Malcolm X. This is what this documentary didn't want to put out. And Farrakhan was a part of it. Farrakhan was in Newark. He helped plan it. You saw that video by Omar Shabazz. We didn't even need to see that in order to know if you're a deep thinker. Because Farrakhan, he couldn't help but to start talking about it over the years. <laughs> you know, a de facto uh, confession. You know, they didn't want his memory, Malcolm X's memory, to live on. They wanted him to just die and go away. And Malcolm X was broke. He couldn't really make any moves. I think he... I was like, okay, I'm tired of this. These psychopaths, they're out to get me. Fuck it. <laughs> I think that's what he was really thinking about. You know? Then you broke, homeless. What can you do? You know, it's like, um, I think that's what he thought. He's like, fuck it. And they figure, okay, well, he's broke. Forget him. They want his memory to die. They, they, they thought it would die. So this is why when people say that I'm faceless, you got to understand. When it comes to me, any, I can't speak for anybody else. When it comes to me, I need enough money to work with so that things happen. I don't have to worry about people hoping somebody comes to my rescue. I know it's taken care of. That's what I'm trying to say. See, when it comes to guys like Malcolm X, he didn't have people going to his rescue. See, what, what they, these documentaries don't tell, they don't give a lot of detail, and they leave some things out. That's what I like to focus on, what they leave out, not what they talk about. Like when Malcolm X went to Mecca, they leave out the fact that his sister paid for that trip, and he asked her. I mean, if you've read the autobiography, you'll know. So, and they also leave out the fact that Malcolm's own siblings sided with Elijah Muhammad. And they even said that Malcolm X was worthy of death. They leave that out. And now that could be jealousy on their part, just like uh, Elijah Muhammad's uh, uh, children, you know, jealous of Malcolm. I mean, they bought him, they bought Malcolm into the nation of Islam. So I think once he rolls nearly to the top, they were probably jealous. It's just like when black people, they get a job, <laughs> and then somebody says, oh, can you get me a job there? Hook me up. Uh, then 
you uh, hook them up. Next thing you know, they're that person you hooked up. They're your supervisor and getting more than you. Instead of being happy, you're like, motherfucker. <laughs> I was here before him. And now he is over me. God damn. He ain't getting paid more than me. What kind of shit is this? <laughs> this is what people do. That's why a lot of black people don't like hooking black people up with jobs. Because they're like, they fear you might rise higher than them. Or they fear that and one of the excuses that they use is, you might make me look bad if you start coming in late. Man, the other person you hooked up starts coming in late and you still do what you do the right way. They're not going to fire you. They're going to fire the person you hooked up. But this is how black people think. And this is what happens in the nation of Islam. I mean, that's the thing you have to remember because that's the. I think that's a critical part of the story of Malcolm X that they leave out. Or stop mentioning is the fact that his brothers denounced him. Called him a hypocrite. The good part is they, you know, for Nation of Islam people, they showed the footage of Elijah Muhammad. You know, because they say Malcolm, uh, Elijah Muhammad said, don't touch Malcolm. The only evidence we have for that is them saying that. <laughs> we don't have any evidence. I didn't see no uh, footage of... Uh, Elijah Muhammad saying, don't touch Malcolm X. You saw in the, in the uh, footage, in the documentary, all the footage was death. He, want, he wanted death, and that's what he got. <laughs> I mean, come on. That's what he was talking about. He's like, uh, he, he's coming to a point. We'll defend ourselves and all that kind of stuff. You know, the threats are out there. And the reason why they were so bold with the threats is because they're backed by the white man. Anytime, and Malcolm X is about to reveal all that. So that's why they had to hurry up and shut his ass up. But anytime you see black guys or anybody being so damn bold, especially when it comes to making death threats and nothing happens to them, because they, Nation of Islam people always say, well, how come Farrakhan didn't go to jail? How come he didn't get arrested? How come uh, Elijah Muhammad didn't go to jail? Because they're free masons. They got the hookup by the white man. They need these. They needed these guys to still look legit. That's why they didn't even arrest them. If they hated the guy, I'm not just talking about for Malcolm X's murder. I'm talking about for all the other damn murders that went on. Don't forget Clarence 13X and a whole few others. I'm about to show, play footage where you're going to hear about it. Uh, they didn't arrest them. As long as they're killing black people, who cares? What they do is they need these guys to come out and look strong, make it look like, man, the white man won't even touch them. Oh, man, these guys are something. They're really protected by Allah, you know? <laughs> That's what they do. That's why Farrakhan hasn't even been arrested. If they really wanted to get the guy, all they had to do was to just say, listen, get him on a fake drug charge, even if the shit is not real. Child molestation charge, rape, any damn thing. Elijah Muhammad, really, you know, he should have had some kind of, uh, I don't know, the, the, the laws of uh, back then, as far as um, statutory rape, but God damn it, he was on the uh, cusp of it. A lot of people, they always say, oh, these are grown women. These are the low, youngest one on record was 16. Probably younger than that when they first got started. But, and they okay that. But when it comes down to it, what kind of 65 year old man is interested in a 16 year old girl? I mean, goddamn. At least, uh, I mean, if he had a 30 year old, okay. I mean, but goddamn. <laughs> Shit. So, this is what they did. This is why they don't arrest the Farrakhan, because they're coon agents. So they got to make him look strong. That's why even as old as he is, they still have to make him look strong. That's why they have him on footage. That's why Farrakhan has the white grandchildren, the white daughter-in-law, the white father flicker he kisses. That's why he's doing everything that they tell him to do, supporting the homosexuals. He's not even supporting what Elijah Muhammad said. 
But I'm guessing Elijah Muhammad would have had to change his um, ways too had he lived longer. But he was old, so they had to groom another man up. Now, when it comes to what's that guy? Uh, damn, it just slipped my mind. Wallace Muhammad. People keep saying that's why I had to make it clear to the uh, search for you, Uhuru. Because I, I see that they were trying to back away. Uh, that's a good question, too. You know what that's all about. Religious uh, cults on that one. But uh, Wallace Muhammad, he was outspoken against his father. In the video I made, Are They Real or Are They Agents, Malcolm X, I explained that Wallace kept on whispering in Malcolm's ear over the years. And he was doing that because he was trying to get a response out of the guy. Even the documentary says something to the effect that Elijah's kids, they wanted the good life and they didn't like Malcolm X. And they didn't want him in charge of nothing. For some odd reason, if you notice, they didn't even talk about Wallace Muhammad. <laughs> he, was a, he was one of the main players in this whole thing. But for some reason, they let him off the hook. Some people say he was an agent. Obviously, he didn't like his father's teachings. Once he died, he switched them over to Orthodox Islam. That's why a lot of those Nation of Islam guys were Orthodox uh, Muslims. I was I would call them a bunch of phonies because they clearly they feared God and the white man more than I mean they clearly feared the white man and Freemasonry more than they fear any Allah. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> so they can get that out of here. Um. Oh, he did. Damn, that's crazy. You see what happened to him in his whole career was crazy. There's still, I still haven't seen a biographical film on Sam Cooke, but many on Muhammad Ali. You notice that's another thing. See that Coon agent side of things. I'm gonna call Ali one too. Whether it was fear or what have you. You see how he's celebrated. Malcolm X is damned. Farrakhan. You heard him over the years. He said he has the meeting with the small hats. And they had dinner. And it was good. Apparently he wasn't worried about getting poison. <laughs> so, but they always discuss his legacy. Why are you discussing the legacy? Because when he goes, he wants to be seen as a great man. So that's why when he goes, you're going to have to watch out and see how the media treats Farrakhan. Then you'll know for sure what it's all about. Like I said in those earlier videos I made, if um, Farrakhan... If he goes out and, they, and there's no and there's a CNN breaking news, Mason of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan has just passed away. He was 89 years old. And then they give you five, ten minutes, a half hour, hour of what he was about, his life story, and the sometimes controversial minister. If they say it like that, they soften up on him. You already know what the deal is. Now, if they say no breaking news and after 10, 20 minutes into the broadcast, they say in other news, uh, Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan has died today in Chicago. He was 89 years old. He'd been suffering from whatever the hell cancer it was, <laughs> uh, colon cancer. He survived that. The man was controversial. He was 89 years old. Now, back to the XFL. You know, stuff like that. If it's like that, that means uh, he's just a regular guy. It's just news. But they celebrate him. You already know what the deal is. I mean, so we, we got to stop this BS. These people are coon agents. That's the one thing this documentary served. It served the show people that the nation of Islam get guilty and that they're protected by the white man because that's those are the two takeaways 
Yeah, that dream boogie. You know, I got that book. I started um reading that a few years ago. But God damn it's so damn long. My man, the author, <laughs> my man just went into way too much detail. But that's good, though, because it's not really good for good reading, but it's good if you want a whole lot of information later on. Like if you want to make a movie out of it. I still don't understand why it's not a movie. But anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, uh, let me see, make sure I get this. Oh, this thing, man, what the hell? All right, let me get this part of Louis Farrakhan. Now, when he does this, he's talking about after James Shabazz got killed in, I think it was 1973. And that's the James Shabazz that they were talking about in the, uh, you see the FBA files had a lot of black lines crossed out. Yeah, that's what they do to protect their coon agents. Redacted, uh, they do that in a whole lot of things. Even in the JFK case, it's like, okay, who are they still protecting after all these years? But um, play this thing on Farrakhan. You can see how vicious this man is. And they, these people are bloodthirsty. They love death. They love destruction. That's why they didn't have a problem killing Malcolm X. And they hate black people, most of all. That's why they don't have a problem killing black people. And what you'll hear is you'll hear things talking about heads rolling. <laughs> uh, and when you hear that, that's going to make let you know for sure that you're dealing with somebody who's a, a nutcase and a psychopath and a coon agent. And on top of that, Malcolm X was just a Small thing. Matter of fact, before I play that, let me also tell you this. This guy, what was his name? Razak. Let me get this guy's name. Keep forgetting his name. Abdul Abdullah Abdur Razak. I was trying to find a video, but he was on stage, and the guy overheard him. That was Malcolm's assistant. I mean, people should know that. You're going to have your agents around. Malcolm knew it, but he didn't know who it was. Some play a good role, some don't. But this assistant of his, who was on Like It Is so many times, and apparently he was a coon agent. He had a lot of coon agents on uh, his role, so to speak. And you had the white government they didn't like him. Then you got a, a whole bunch of Uncle Tom house niggas. They didn't like him. He couldn't win. It's like JFK. When the whole government is against you, you're going to die. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it is. Malcolm X is increasingly alone, but this Razak guy was on stage. I forgot the other guy, his name. I was trying to find a clip. But he came in, overheard him and Malcolm X talking. And... Um, he was screaming at Malcolm X as if he was Malcolm X pimp. I mean, that's supposed to be his assistant. So that's it's clear that Malcolm X knew the deal. He knew what was going on. But I always maintain that Malcolm X was talking about Elijah Muhammad only after he realized uh, they're really trying to kill him. They're trying to destroy the man. So he's reaching out for allies. Martin Luther King's camp, Orthodox Islam, anybody who could, he could find. That's why he softened up his stance a lot on, on certain things, not because uh, he changed his ways and he was didn't see the white man as the devil. It's just that he was looking for some allies. He didn't have any money. He needed some support. He knew he had respect. But see, that's why I never underestimate older people. Especially when you got a whole bunch of brains 
to your few. You got Elijah Muhammad, was, he's been around. He knows the deal. He knows how to outsmart people, even though he wasn't the most articulate person around. But he knows how to outsmart people because he's slick and he was a Freemason. So he already knew the deal. He knew what advantages that he had that Malcolm did not have. But Malcolm thought his popularity and his respect would go a long way. But as you can see how the people in Newark uh, uh, protected the killer. You know, some people prefer that. But anyway, let me get to this Farrakhan uh, thing. Right, right. In the city of Newark. Yes, sir. What was he murdered for? What had he done? He was a civilizer yes, sir. Right. of the black man of Newark, New Jersey. Yes, sir. What do you mean he was a civilizer? He was cleaning up black men and women in that city, right. making them respecters of the divine law of God and man. Right. Yes, now he is dead from an assassin's bullet. Yes, sir. Well, then, what is the duty of the Muslims in regard to his death or in regard to the death of any Muslims? We have a duty. It is written in the Holy Quran that whosoever kills a Muslim, he must be killed. We are not trying to say, if you want to condemn us saying we're taking the law into our own hands. No, we're not permitted to do that. But we are taking the law of God into our hands that God has put into our hands. You say you are looking for the murderer. Well, we are looking for him too. You say to us, you should stay out of it and leave it to us. Why should we leave it to you? You have a duty by a man who is murdered in your city. And we also have a duty by our brother who was murdered in your city. We too have that duty. So the Holy Quran teaches us investigate. And we are investigating. And the Holy Quran teaches us murder him who murders you yes. well we're going to carry out that law whether the world likes it or not we are not trying to show you any disrespect no no we are not an evil people we are lovers of life and we respect the sacredness of life. But he who did not respect the sacredness of the life of a righteous person and a teacher of righteousness. What right do we have to respect a life like that? It is your weakness, America, in your corruption, America, in carrying out even good laws that you have that is bringing your country to hell. But we... Have a law that we are duty bound yes, to carry into practice. Yes, it is you who coddles your murderers. It is you who coddle your thieves. Yes, but Allah's law does not coddle any wrongdoer. Yes, they must be made examples of for others. Yes, Holy Quran said, make examples of them. Yes, and it even goes so far as to teach you how they should be killed. Yes, sir. Smite them at the back of the neck. Yes, Take off their heads. Yes, since it is in the head that the thought of evil was hatched. Yes, to do an evil deed against a righteous servant of God, then pull off the head. Yes, Roll it down the street and make the world know yes, that the murderer of a Muslim must be be murdered. <laughs> Mr.
Messenger Muhammad writes in a very beautiful article found in the Muhammad Speaks newspaper titled The Nation's Kneeling. In a paragraph he writes, as it is written in the Holy Quran, the only true book, whosoever kills a Muslim, he must be killed. He said, you will find this coming to pass. You will not get away with mistreating us in this day and time, while God in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praises are due forever, is with us. You will find this coming to pass. No, my beloved brothers and sisters, we must be a strong community. And we must respect all life. Respect the life of your poor, savage brother. You know he's ignorant? Teach him. You know he's foolish? Give him wisdom. But if he makes that mistake, of killing a man who comes to teach him right, then he must pay the price for his action. And the price is death. And the Holy Quran teaches, slay them wherever you find them. Wherever it may be, it is the duty of every Muslim to avenge the blood of his brother. You should love a law like this, black man. Because if you joined up with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and tried to clean yourself up from the filthy way of life of your enemy. You would find the peace that you seek and the heaven that you seek. You wouldn't have to die and go someplace. That heaven is waiting for you if you would submit yourself to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and be yourself. Next week, if it pleases Almighty God, Allah and His Messenger, we're going to have a great Rally for Muhammad on Randall's Island. Yes, sir. You know where that is. Yes, sir. Right under the Triborough Bridge. And we don't want to see you over the microphone. We want to see you in person. Yes, sir. We want to talk with you about the survival of the black man. Yes, we want to. Oh, sorry, knock that down by mistake. But I think you get the idea. That's a man <laughs> uh, talking about death, talking about killing. He said, damn the uh, laws, just like he did with Malcolm X. <laughs> I mean, come on. And the funny part is, according to that chat room, death was carried out. I think they said three guys got beheaded and put on display, their heads put on display in a park in Newark. Now, this man said what he was going to do. It was done. Where's his arrest at? How, how, how come they didn't get arrested for murder? Because they're backed by the white man. That's what that's all about. These are cool agents. I've been trying to tell people for the longest time. Um... So what I want to do next, because I want to try and run through this. I want to play. Let me see if I should play this. Hey, let me play this real quick. This is um just a short clip of Malcolm X talking about who was after his ass. He knows. And we all know. Riding on, on the entire East Coast, Eastern region. And he was in the inner circle. And he pointed out that in October, it wasn't, he didn't cease being a captain. But his influence or authority was placed beneath that of uh, Clarence, the captain who's in Boston. Clarence was put over Joseph. And shortly after that, as Amir, Leon Amir testified, uh, Cla Clarence, the captain from Boston, and John, the captain from Springfield, Massachusetts, came to New York to carry out this so-called assassination. And they came to Leon looking for a silencer for their gun. Well, see, I understand all of it, but they, 
in a park, uh, half a block from my house here in the home of Alvin, who's also one of Elijah Muhammad's uh, men, looking for a chance when they could, you know, make their move. But thanks to Allah, they didn't get a chance. Al Van X was a gifted piano player who played on the popular hit song, A White Man's Heaven is a Black Man's Hell, sung by Louis X, who also played violin. Al Van X on piano, C. Sybil on guitar, M. Asarum on bongo, W. Brewster on bongo and kunga, and K. Husband on bass. The extended play two-sided 45 RPM record was released in 1960 and it was beautifully performed by all the artists. It is now a collector's item. Al Van X was the brother of Louis X, now known as Louis Farrakhan. We were living in luxury, enjoying freedom, justice, and equality. We wore silk and robes, slippers was gold. We were the wealthiest and the wisest people, I'm told. Now we are the poorest of the poor. Nobody wants us at their door. All right, brothers and sisters, this behind me is the home of Malcolm X. Minister Louis Farrakhan's brother, Alvin Farrakhan, stayed right there. Turn that camera around. When you're looking at Danny's grocery store, right above, he stayed in apartment 2B. That's Alvin Farrakhan. Again, the proximity. Just for your information. As many of you know, uh, last Sunday morning, about 3 o'clock, he's not only aimed them where it can in any way be. All right, that volume is too low. But basically, um, he's explaining uh, about the firebombing. And once again, you know, it's pretty clear what's going on, ABC. It's pretty clear what these people are all about. Ain't no doubt about that. I mean, that's why it's called Who All Killed Malcolm X? <laughs> because the documentary, they tried to put it on William Bradley, uh, Thomas Hagen, who admitted it, and some other dudes who they didn't even bother to find. <laughs> they just presumed that they were dead. I mean, I, what the fuck kind of report is that? What kind of journalism is that? Uh, oh, well, uh, somebody said they could be dead. No. Journalists, and he has a crew with them. They don't just say, oh, well, I guess they're dead. Fuck them. <laughs> I mean, you go out and find out if they're dead. Go look for uh, death records. I mean, that's what you do. But they didn't bother to do that. They just wanted to leave it at William Bradley, who was dead. Elijah Muhammad, who was dead. Anybody, if you notice, anybody who was living... They didn't want to assess the blame, like Farrakhan. Is it fear, or is it some other kind of connection going on here? That's what we have to ask ourselves. And when I was watching it, that's what happened in my mind. And let me get to these other guys. Norman 3X Butler, that was the 81, soon to be 81-year-old man with great, great, great grandchildren. I was surprised he was still alive, to be honest with you. His partner who got arrested was Khalil Islam. That was the light-skinned dude. Matter of fact, let me see if I got these people up. Yeah, I got it up. Let me uh, share the screen. This guy right here, you can't tell me he he, he looked like a sick motherfucker back then. You can't, can't deny that, though. Uh, you know, the eyes, he looked sick. And they were always walking around like said they didn't do it. I, I always looked at that as I think that they did it but even if they, you know, they're just trying to act like they didn't do it. That's part of how the confusion goes when you pull out these uh, assassinations, these hits, political assassinations. You know, and as you can see, this man didn't look worried at all because some people dedicated to the cause, if they do the uh, time, they looked at as martyrs. Now, when this man got out of jail or prison, he was appointed head of a, a NOI Harlem Mosque. 
<laughs> so, I mean, he got a reward. They all got rewards. So, I mean, I mean, these guys aren't innocent. But that's what the documentary has you believe, that these guys are innocent. I, I never believed these guys were innocent. Even if they didn't pull the trigger, which they probably could have. People, They say people identified these guys, despite what the documentary said. The other guy, the light-skinned dude, I remember him uh, making his rounds. In fact, this is the man right here. Remember him making his rounds, saying he wasn't uh, guilty. But he didn't sound like an innocent man. <laughs> he sounded like a guilty man. You know? He didn't like Malcolm X. Like, that's the one thing I could say with all the different nation of Islam sex. The one thing they all have in common is they hate Malcolm X. And they say they hated Malcolm X because they claim to have a love for Elijah Muhammad. Which... I guess that's what they have to say because if you don't say it, then people can't really see you as claiming to be the nation of Islam. So, <laughs> but the funny thing about the nation of Islam is so called Master Farad Muhammad, a white dude, is supposed to be not only master, they're calling a white man a master and God. But they're supposed to be pro-black. See, they, that's not a part of their rules. It's not pro-black. It's not pan-Africanism. That's not their rules. So when they talk that, they're lying to everybody. They love the white man. It's a white Freemason outfit. That's what it's all about. Farad is supposed to be God, but it's always talking about Elijah Muhammad most of the time. All praise is due for Elijah Muhammad. For the master Farah, for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. It's just like Orthodox Islam. And it's based on that too. The, the, the concept, anyway, of mind control. Because Allah is supposed to be God, but everything is peace be upon the Prophet Muhammad. They give more praise to the Prophet Muhammad than they do to God, but yet you're supposed to be praising God. Doesn't make sense. But that's the way it is, <laughs> you know. I mean, if God is the, the 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 creator and a messenger is just a messenger, fuck the messenger, praise the Lord. I mean, who? who I don't know any other uh, religions that do that. <laughs> Bypass the uh, God and, and go right to the messenger. But that's what they do. But anyways, these guys are. I don't give a damn what that documentary said. These guys are goddamn guilty. They hated Malcolm X. And um, you know, they, they they it was all a scheme to confuse. This was his assistant that I was telling you about, who said that if that was overheard by a guy, I, I think it could have been this guy right here. No, that's Earl. It's another guy that overheard this man talking, screaming at Malcolm. He said he was screaming at him at the top of his lungs, and said, "If you don't do what we tell you to do, we're gonna kill you." And he, he said that the man, that this guy right here in the green, Mazak, he said, he said that we are going to kill you if you don't do what we tell you to do. Now, the question is, what the hell did they want Malcolm to do in order to live? I'm, guess, I'm guessing it was to compromise his principles and to start telling lies and uh, about the nation of Islam or anything else. And I think Malcolm X may have felt, fuck it. If, if I come out lying, number one is to destroy my credibility. That's number one. And it's to make them look good. It, and they'll still probably kill me afterwards, you know? <laughs> so he's like, fuck it. You know, they, they already, uh, been threatening his ass already. I mean, it's pretty evident they're going to kill him. I think that's what Malcolm X was thinking. So he's like, fuck it. You know, I'm going to just say what I got to say because uh, I'm already marked anyway. To me, you know, it may be a sad situation for a lot, but to me, I'd rather choose uh, if you want to call it immortality as a, a figure by getting slain earlier than Turn into a weak old man, 
you know? That's just me. Look at this guy. You want to grow, grow uh, to be old looking like this? I'd rather be slain, and this is how people remember me, as I was. But unfortunately, the forces were against the man. So now here's the, the man who actually admitted Hagen, or Hare. He had two different, three different names. He's still walking around. He's still alive. I think they say he's in uh, Brooklyn. I mean, they're so bold, they don't even move out of the area. <laughs> I mean, they, you think they moved to Nevada or somewhere, you know? But they stay in the area. And, you know, a lot of people probably wouldn't realize what these guys look like if they were right next to you. And a lot of people wouldn't do anything any damn way. Because they probably say, oh, well, that's an old man. I ain't mess with an old man. But, you know, that's the way it is. When you're dealing with these types of people, let me see if there's anything else. Oh, yeah, there's one more main thing I have to uh, <laughs> play. I want to make sure I'm on. This is it right here. The film footage. Right here. And uh, this is where you could see what the documentary left out. And obviously, they left it out on purpose. Was the attempted escape of Talmadge Hare, who was nearly pulled apart by Malcolm's followers. This amazing footage also reveals the presence of William Bradley, who has a copy of Muhammad Speaks in his coat pocket. Bradley is the man who fired the shotgun at Malcolm. Bradley, knowing that Hare was injured badly, has no choice but to go for the body wrap, Velcro tied to Hare's waist. If Malcolm's followers retrieved the contents of the body wrap, the whole thing could implicate many people, including some of Malcolm's people, who were in on the plot. This slowed down footage shows Bradley retrieving the body wrap off of Hayer's waist. The body wrap is highlighted with yellow and orange superimposed colors. Once again, in real time, unaltered. As you can see, the police let them do it, <laughs> you know, uh, and it looked like they were waiting after he got it. Just let him walk away because they were in on it. But these guys, they felt important because they're like, okay, well, the white man has our back. So as long as we can get away with it, who gives a damn? You know, I'm super nigga now. You know, we all know when cops are trying to apprehend somebody, they're not going to let somebody just come up and touch the suspect because number one the cops are paranoid they're thinking what are these guys trying to do are they down with the guy are they trying to kill us are they going to harm us but they let this guy just walk up to the guy take the rap and it's there see the documentary they left that out because that's what i was looking for i was looking to see if they were gonna put that in but they, every time that scene came up and they kept playing the footage over and over throughout the documentary but they cut that part out every time when you, when you see them doing stuff like that, that's when you know it's bullshit. They're covering up. I mean, they, they made the focus on Bradley. But they didn't make the focus on what he was doing. They just try to leave you to guess. Well, why are people praising this man as a hero in Newark? 
Well, why did, how come you didn't show the whole footage, man? And they would have had it in, well, not 4K, but they would have had it, you know, in the clear footage that they had. So <clears throat> I think there's a site. See, my uh, other browser I had everything in, for some odd reason, it crashed, and I lost half of the tabs I had, which is usually hundreds. <laughs> but uh, there was a site. Maybe somebody could put it in the chat room where you can actually find clips. I forgot the name of the site. And uh, you can find it stock footage, and it's clear. Maybe that's the name of the site, stock footage or something. Um, so you can see this in its entirety, see a clearer version of it. But imagine if that had been in color, it would have been even clearer. And those assassinations back then, when things are in black and white, it's easier to get away with things. But when it's in color, it's harder to get away with things. Now we're living in a 4K, 8K world. <laughs> it's even harder to get away with things. But everybody's camera is under control because the next big event that is going to happen, I don't know where, but it's going to happen. And that's why I always say, look out for your phone. It's not working. <laughs> if something goes down. And all those uh, cameras on the traffic lights, that ain't just for traffic. You can see that when they start tracking uh, people on the street, beating people up or robbing them. If it's just for traffic, how are they getting this footage? <laughs> you know? But this man took this rap, this body rap, and um, you know what he said. This is why Omar Shabazz, he did a great job on his documentaries because uh, he's bringing up some other stuff. Um. Because he went in. He went in all the way in. Uh, and they had to mention him in the uh, fake documentary. It's like the documentary. People heard of evidence of revision about the JFK and a few other events. That was raw as it was. And it showed you how they lie in the media and change stories around on the fly. The, I think it was the History Channel. Since this thing was so popular, the History Channel came up with their own version to make it slant it toward the official story because they hate having people think other than the brainwashing that they want to put on them. So that's why they had to counter it. And that's, that's what I think this, um, who killed Malcolm X was because that's why they put the question mark <laughs> on the title. Who killed Malcolm X? Because at the end of the damn thing, who did it? That's what you're still wondering. They just had the this guy who we know did it, but of course he's dead. That's why they do these things. Because, oh, well, you can't question a dead man, so it's over with. But Farrakhan's still alive. But they totally ignored Farrakhan, as you might expect. George Bush, one, was still alive. They could ask him about the JFK assassination. Now he's dead. Gerald Ford is dead. All these people, they can't ask these people anymore. And that's the whole point. These people live to get away with it. They die not being brought to justice. I mean, people can still bring people to justice if they wanted to, but you know, it is what it is. You know, uh, all this was happening before most of our times. You know, at a time period, you know, I can't imagine living it. Truth be told, but these are thugs that did this. You see this man's face? This man was thugged out. It's supposed to be a Muslim, but going around thugging and robbing and killing. And you heard Farrakhan <laughs> saying, we got our ways. First he said, we got to obey the laws. Then we said, well, we, we, we make our own laws too. <laughs> I mean, they do a whole lot of double and triple talk. <laughs> it ain't funny. But that documentary... Like I said, it's only good for the, uh, what do you call it? The technical quality, the, the film quality. But that's about it. You know, and, and seeing John R. Lee and Ali and these other guys in their elderly state. You know? Yeah, that footage was, yeah, you're right, uh, Operation Exodus. Omar Shabazz has the best 
hands down productions on, on, on the Malcolm X situation. There ain't no doubt about that. And I don't know. It seems they made a mention of him in the documentary. <clears throat> but obviously, <laughs> the evidence that he presents and in the interviews that he presented, they didn't make any use of that. <laughs> so it goes to show what their angle was. They talk about William Bradley being uh, the killer, the trigger man, the prime trigger man. But yet, they feared Farrakhan. They said Bradley was protected, clearly by the state of New Jersey, which means it went beyond New Jersey and went to the damn government, federal government itself. You see how those politicians, those coon politicians were shook? But this is why these people sell out, as long as they get what they get out of it. They don't give a damn. You know? All they know is, I want to be famous. I want to be rich. Who else has to pay the price? Who gives a damn? That Cory Booker. And you saw that Jamaican Susan Rice threatened that other puppet, Snoop Dogg. That was all theater. But she's talking about, we'll send the army after you. I mean, she didn't own the army, but see, they, they let a, a non-black American get that far. Colin Powell, but not us. Barack Obama, but not us. You got to look at these people's backgrounds. That's why I emphasize this. And I'm glad, that's another reason why I'm glad the documentary was there. I'm glad people watched it. Because this proves what I was saying. And people can better understand what I was saying when I talk about the Caribbeans. We got to uh, separate ourselves from them. And I always say that the Africans weren't dealing with us. It's the Caribbeans who are here to ma manipulate us, and that includes the Marcus Garvey. Let's see. I heard Farrakhan gave orders four of his followers not to speak on this doc. So still not to bring on one of heat. Yeah, I don't know if you just joined us, but I alluded to the fact that some people ask, what was this for? If there are no answers, and you can't bring anybody to justice. Well, I say Farrakhan's still out there. And this could be a warning to Farrakhan, <laughs> you know, because Farrakhan's always worried about his legacy when he goes. To me, as long as I'm world famous, give a fuck about my legacy after I'm dead. As long as I know people will hear of me, they heard of me. I mean, what more can you want? You know, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, as long as you're going to be, you're not going to be remembered like Malcolm X, but I guess. Maybe his small hat masters are going to hook him up if he keeps cooperating. And I also made mention that Farrakhan, I always believed that he was a coon agent from the beginning, went into the Nation of Islam as a coon agent. A lot of people can't fathom that, but you see the results out of it. You know, and you and that's the other thing about that documentary. They showed you and told people that they had coon agents on the scene. And that white dude, or that Italian guy, he even said, uh, no, no, that was something else I was uh, reading on a live before, when they were talking about the Black Panthers going undercover. And they're sending black guys out to Africa to spy on exiled Black Panthers. And he said, who else are we going to send in? We can't send in some Chinese guys to spy on the black people, can we? <laughs> that's why I always say black people help the white man destroy other black people that's what they do if you weren't there to go spy like the white man said who else are they going to get yeah they might get a Caribbean that's what Louis Farrakhan is a Caribbean and a hater of black America Lover of the white man. And like I said, when he dies, which you never know when it might happen. Matter of fact, if anything is typical of what happens, what usually happens when something like this comes out, then he'll drop dead. You see how William Bradley dropped dead when this man claimed that he was going to interview the guy. 
And he was like, oh, I, I was going to do it earlier. <laughs> you should have. God damn it. <laughs> I mean, why don't you go interview Farrakhan right now? How about, how about that? Why you can? <laughs> Akbar Muhammad was there, but he didn't really have nothing to add. See, that's why a Khalid Muhammad that's why he had to go. Because once he's gone, he can't drop secrets. I mean, he already started dropping secrets. Just like Malcolm. Before he left. But he wasn't really trying to go that far. And Khalid Muhammad shouldn't have been taken out from the Nation of Islam. But Farrakhan's a coon agent. He does what his white masters tell him, tell him to do. Operation Exodus, he knows that Farrakhan, here's the link for anybody who wants to join me, that Farrakhan was indeed kissing on a white man, which is part of this gay agenda. And it shows that the man is a coon agent because this is what he is ordered to do because he has influence. This is why the Million Man March took place. Obviously, nothing happened happened out of the Million Man March. It was for one reason, well, two reasons. One, to get Farrakhan in the history books to do what Martin Luther King did. Two, to demonstrate that Farrakhan has influence over the people. So that made him seem like a legit leader because at that time, Farrakhan was still, was still seen as a fringe character, an evil guy. But once he uh, arranged all those people at the Million Man March, that made him legit guy. But nothing happened. And like I said, if they really wanted to get him, they could have got him a long time ago. They could have gotten him on, the, on these uh, James Shabazz killings. I'm sure uh, Operation Exodus heard that before. The man ordered, clearly ordered people to go kill people, to take revenge. In case people don't know that James Shabazz, that was the guy who said that Malcolm X probably uh, firebombed his own place. And you saw how happy and confident he was in spewing that BS. And I also believe Malcolm's uh, brother is second that, that shit too. I mean, with brothers like them, I don't even know if they're still alive. His brothers, but I assume they're dead. But see, since I'm not a journalist, I'm not doing the checking, but my man did the damn documentary. Those other named assassins, you should have been checking them. See if they're alive. Missed an opportunity. Shit. What better way to hide somebody is just to have people say, oh yeah, they're dead. Oh, okay, well, they're dead. I'm not investigating. You find out. <laughs> I mean, damn. It's just crazy. But this is what they do when they cover up for people. And this is what, what I've been saying all this time. This is why we can't get anywhere. Because we have cool agents out here. This is why you must make sure that the coon agents are identified. Now, Malcolm X, he obviously didn't identify his. Because I told you they're agents on different levels. The Gene Roberts, higher level agent who has to make himself visible, make himself trustworthy. And he worked his way up. <clears throat> and he said that there were probably other agents, but he didn't know about them. And that's how they do it, because each man has to play their part, even a woman, too. They got to play their parts well. When they play their parts well, they can pull off the job better. Some agents are never identified. You heard those cops on there. They're never identified. They're just there to do their job, report all activity. That's what they said. And we got to understand there are a lot of people out here who are agents for different reasons. That's why you never sleep on anybody. It could be high level or low level. Some people say, well, you don't show your face, you're an agent. 
Well, when you keep asking to have faces shown, I'm guessing you must be an agent. Because there's no other reason why people need to show their face unless it's strictly to report. You got to identify people. Uh, the Malcolm X grandson murder, you know, it's hard for me to find strong details on that. Part of me says, was it real? Or did they pull off uh, something fake to have the guy go into hiding and then reappear later? If it was real, then I guess it was a setup. To me, I didn't know he was making political interviews. And I didn't think people liked the guy because, you know, he killed Betty Shabazz, who probably could have been alive today, for all we know, if it had not been for him. You know, so I didn't know what to think. But I'll tell you this, though. A lot of people in the nation of Islam today, they've been, they've been sending mix, mixed messages over the decades. They all act like they uh, liked Malcolm or respected him. But they all agreed that they wanted the man dead. <laughs> I mean, because he was a hypocrite, so to speak. But again, I say this, he was not a hypocrite. He was suspended from the Nation of Islam indefinitely, then said, fuck it, I'm out. Once you're out, you're no longer a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite only if you stay in and you say, fuck it. I don't believe this bullshit. See, Elijah Muhammad's own family, they were the hypocrites. But nobody killed them. <laughs> and nobody said nothing about them. See, all these clues, this is how you could tell what it was about, what it was really about. By trying to eliminate what it wasn't about. Just like when Coons shut my other channel down. <laughs> and thanks to Operation Exodus, he tried to mediate, but he found out that the Coons, they're full of shit. <laughs> Sometimes people got to see up front by themselves to see that some people are full of shit. That's what it is. But um, that's what it is sometimes, man. You got to, um, you see that it wasn't about a hypocrite wasn't about jealousy or else Elijah's sons would have been taken out. This is what you got to look for. Eliminate the clues. Once you eliminate the clues, you know it was about something else. You know what I mean? So, again, once again, I only praise the documentary for opening people's minds. Some people got overly excited. Those are the people who don't do the research or don't know the background history of everything. Oh, and that Thomas 15X Johnson, the light-skinned dude that uh, they say was innocent, which I, I'm not buying it. I'm still not buying it. He was an NOI enforcer. That's on uh, Mr. Shabazz's videos, too. Knocking heads. That's not an innocent man. <laughs> Norman 3X Butler. He looked like a killer. I guess he was lucky that he had kids at, as a teen. He said he had six kids. He does look bad for a man that's 80 fucking years old, though. About to be 81, though. Uh... But this documentary exonerates people, to me, who haven't been proven to be innocent. I'm going to be honest with you. Because this hit on Malcolm X, it has all the uh, relation of other white man hits. Go in, cause confusion. Uh, then you have coons like Dick Gregory. I don't give a damn if he's dead. I dissed him when he was alive to his uh, voice so he could hear me. <laughs> and I don't give a damn that he's dead now because I don't have no sympathy for Coons. He comes around with that, oh, they shot from the balcony. Nobody, no witness even said anything like that. But he comes in with that bullshit because this is what the white man tells him to introduce. That's why he went around talking all that bullshit to people. Because it's brainwashing, trying to get you to think about other things. Tells you the truth here, but then he tells you a whole bunch of lies there. 
He said, oh, Malcolm got shot from above. Matter of fact, I was on the, I asked him about that. And that's when he got, as is typical with the Nation of Islam and other Kuhn agents, they get upset when you start busting them. Because I said, no, the autopsy report said that the shotgun blasted art killed Malcolm X. And then he's like, if it wasn't for me, there wouldn't have been no report. Okay, motherfucker, if it wasn't for you, there wouldn't have been no report released to the public. If that's the case, your monkey ass should have read the report. <laughs> what are you arguing about? You know how this shit happened. See, Malcolm, uh, Dick Gregory was a coon agent. Malcolm couldn't trust a lot of these guys. And that's the problem when, I hate to say it, but when you are trying to do this job and you don't have that financial uh, backup. You know what I mean? You got everybody coming your way trying to act like they're cool, but they're coon agents for the white man. And of course, that show wasn't going to mention Freemasonry because that's the bond that brings coon agents in with the white man as their brothers. Well, I think I put it, oh no, no, I put it up on the, uh, Last channel, it was up, and then I put the link in, and then, you know, what happened with that. So, I think I'll put it back up. <clears throat> but, see, he, Dick Gregory, was trying to protect Farrakhan. That's not cool. Once I got wind of that, I said, yeah, I know what's up. And he was trying to talk shit about Malcolm X. I said, yeah, this guy, this guy's an agent. And he was doing that because Farrakhan and others were still alive. Farrakhan still has a juice card <laughs> because he's still the leader of his nation of Islam. But, you know, after a while, it's going to be up for him. Then they'll probably come out and say, depending on what Farrakhan does in the end to his masters, because I think that's what this documentary is setting things up for and that reopening of the investigation. I mean, come on, man. Look how long ago it was. You, you're not going to get the cops for being cool, well, white agents. <laughs> not going to get them on that. At best, they'll probably say yeah, some of these cops are racist. They just didn't like Malcolm X. So they turn the other cheek. But see, the problem is the evidence shows that they work with the Nation of Islam. That's what the evidence shows. So right there, that invalidates the Nation of Islam as pro-black. Right there. Right there. <laughs> so that's how I like to do I like to piece the puzzle together. And this is easier to put together than the JFK assassination, even though that's easily put together. Well, not easily put together. You could put that together. Uh, the, the RFK assassination... That's different because they tore the damn building down, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but people got what they got. They know that the bullets, they got the bullet holes in different places that they shouldn't have been bullet holes at. But that's what they do. It's just like that new town, uh, uh, Sandy Hook. They tore the damn scene of the crime, so-called crime down. So you can't look into anything again. And nobody ever saw any damn real pictures. You think Seven assassins were at the ballroom that day instead of five. Well, I'll tell you this. The five um, that my man confessed to, including himself, plus uh, Khalil Islam and Norman, Norman 3X Butler. How about that? That'll make seven. <laughs> you know, maybe the other guys, they didn't really have to shoot. You know, they come on. You think in an operation like that, five guys they're just going to have five guys coming in as shooters and nobody else around to help coordinate and help people slip out I mean Malcolm had coon agents on both sides you know so that's the way it works when they stage these events just like the JFK event there are a whole bunch of people on the scene of that crime so they can control the scene because they were standing by making sure that they could take all the uh, camera footage from the people because that was the key thing 
FBI, Secret Service, get the uh, camera, get the film footage. A lot of people never got their footage back. Others got theirs back damaged. If it shows something, <laughs> you know. That's why I say these days, everybody has a cell phone in their hand. So they can get phone companies to cut your phone off. And then you're going to think, oh, man, some uh, towers went out. So my phone service got disrupted. But what about the people with a standalone camera? <laughs> that's going to be the problem. And you know another event's coming of some kind because that's the way it is. Um, Sirhan, Sirhan, didn't shoot RFK from behind the air? Yeah, that's what they said. I mean, that's what the medical examiner said. He goes against what the official story says. I mean, the man got shot behind the ear. The pictures are there. I mean, there's no denying that. <laughs> but since he's a Kennedy, that's the thing about the 60s, man. That was a decade where they were just taking out anybody. <laughs> and give a damn what your position was. If you uh, were going against the grain, you got taken out. But with the Malcolm X, it's unfortunate because I didn't, I wasn't around back in those days, but I always got the sense that, you know, those times were hard for the black man. You got racism everywhere you turned around. And uh, you couldn't really make a move. Nothing was fair. And then you come around and find out that these black people, who claimed to love the white man. They really hated black people and loved the white man. <laughs> it's just crazy. But those are the facts. That's what that documentary showed. That those people from that generation, they say, just let it go. In other words, they're saying, who gives a fuck about Malcolm X? Who gives a fuck about black people? That's what they're saying. That's why you can't find justice. That's why when Pan-Africans cry, I don't give a damn. That's why when Muslims claim to be righteous, I'm not buying it. I'm not just picking on Islam either when I say that, but those people are supposed to be orthodox Muslims, but they're still protecting that, still making excuses, and they still hate Malcolm X, and they still feel that Malcolm X deserve to die. Why did he deserve to die? It's not because he was a hypocrite. Obviously, he must have been messing people's money up, which is what a lot of people alluded to. You know? That's what it has to be. Why else would they still hate the man? He's long gone. It's just like the, I always point this out with the correlation between the other assassinations of the 60s. The so-called conservatives, Republicans, they still hate John Kennedy and his brother and Ted Kennedy. <laughs> I'll never forget when Ted Kennedy died that um, Rush Limbaugh was talking shit about the guy as they were uh, taking his body for burial. I said, damn, they must really have a real problem with these people. I mean, damn, that's true hate. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is on that. Um, again, I'm going to close with saying that the Nation of Islam to this day, they still act like they hate or they had, they loved and had respect for Malcolm X when the truth is they hated the guy. And if nothing else is to just prove that, hey, I was loyal to uh, Elijah Muhammad. Even the breakaway separate Nation of Islam uh, sects, even though they have two things in common. <laughs> they hate Farrakhan and call him a hypocrite. And they, they all hate uh, Malcolm X and feel that he deserved to die. And they defend Elijah Muhammad. And like I said earlier, it's because they can't say, even if they wanted to, and tell the truth. They just can't say, okay, Malcolm was right. And Elijah was the hypocrite. Then they don't have any basis.
for their nation of Islam <laughs> to exist. You know what I mean? Because it's like, um, okay, well, well, if the leader was a hypocrite, but see, the leader is supposed to be Master Fraud. That's that's who the leader is supposed to be, right? <laughs> but he never gets the credit. So that's what you got to understand, man. It's, it's all about being people, being coon agents. That's what it's all about. The bottom line. If you didn't have traitors, none of this stuff would happen. Malcolm would have had a great back. And I'll say this before I close that. We all heard, matter of fact, I got that, um, the uh, footage here. I might play it if you want me to, or you can do it on your own, but <laughs> it's the footage of the, no, I ain't going to play it, but it's the footage of the FBI trying to come in and have Malcolm X turn coon on Elijah. And it was good, smart of him to record that, so it'll be clear how he reacted. And how the FBI, that they will go pay you a visit trying to uh, turn you out, make you a coon. Coon agent. But Malcolm X, even as these psychopaths, still wanted to kill him for their white masters. Uh, how do we find it? Let me see. Well, it's 14 minutes. I don't want to play that, but it's called the FBI secret recording of Malcolm X. Refusing to sell out. Matter of fact, I'll put the, uh, the link in here. So I keep forgetting I can put the link in. <laughs> now, he didn't sell out at all. Even though psychopaths wanted to kill him. And he knew that they were going to kill him. In his mind, it was still like, listen. Oh, no problem. In his mind, it was still like, listen, man. I know they're killing me, but I'm not going to turn coon against Elijah Muhammad for the white man. So if we had more brothers like that of conviction, we'd be okay. But instead, we got sellouts, people belonging to secret societies, and I still ask, why do they do it? And why do they serve their white masters to destroy their own people and play these games? But they want to kill and keep people down. You talk about the crabs in the barrel. That's probably why these people keep using that term crabs in the barrel, because they're the crabs in the barrel. They're the coons <laughs> keeping us down. And you notice how every time they talk about success and everything is always about money Success, but the, the the polites who's not even one of us always talking about successful. Um, you're miserable, you're broke, you're poor, you're miserable. I'm successful. In other words, you're saying get down with the white man, get down with this Freemason program, and become a slave, and you too will become rich. That's the bottom line with that. So, with that, I think I said all I had to say. And um, I said it before on other videos that I made that Malcolm X was for real. Farrakhan is the agent. And those pitiful black people that you saw on that documentary in Newark, New Jersey, including Cory Booker, Roz Baraka, that lieutenant governor, uh, black lady. As you can see, the position is be under a white man. Might have a nice position, but it's still, you're the apprentice. And you're not even studying, you're not even being the apprentice to take over. You're just the apprentice, and you're going to remain the apprentice. <laughs> and you sell your people out. That's why you got to get coon regulation going. Yeah, I'm not sure. Could be in a couple of days. Could be in a couple of days. I'm going to try and get somebody... Uh, other topics I've been thinking about. I'm going to try and experiment on this um, PowerPoint because I haven't used that in a while. I was experimenting, experimenting on it a few days ago. I was like, damn, I haven't used this shit in a while. <laughs> so, because uh, I want to bring up some other stuff instead of just relying on the internet only. But I like the fact that the PowerPoint does let you search with the internet, though. So that's cool. And put some pictures up through there. But we'll see how it works. 
I downloaded the documentary, but as far as buying it is concerned, I'm not even sure that I would actually pay money for it. I'm gonna be honest with you. Because at the end of the day, we're left with nothing. <laughs> no answers. Just a, uh, okay, who killed Malcolm X? And that's where, it, after you watch it, who killed him? Who controlled these people? That's what you got to go. They, they don't even attempt to go into that. That's where the Freemasonry comes in, the secret societies. With that, I'm out. Hit the wrong button. With that, I'm out. <laughs>